welcome back to the second uh, lecture. So, uh, in this lecture, I'm gonna talk about um, shuffling cards and uh, the kind of basic uh, concept that we have uh, in the in the notion of shuffling shuffling cards. So, um, let's say you like begin from a from a deck of cards. Um, let's say actually, I think I have. Okay, here. Um, let's see, I got this. Um, I don't know. They're like moving cards. I'm from Finland. <laughs> this is a, a topic. But uh, so we have. Um, <coughs> what do we have? Uh, so we have this kind of deck of cards with uh, 52 cards. I've removed the Joker elements from this uh, from this deck. And uh, you could think about that this is uh, just a collection of basically, uh, you could say that they are they are essentially um, at some order. So you, you will you could think about that uh, each card corresponds to some <coughs> integer that uh, uh, that corresponds to like their location in the deck. So let me just uh, draw a little bit here. So this is like uh, shuffling cards. Uh, what we have here, so we have this deck of cards. So we we could have the um, the three like lands that we have here. Uh, sorry, four lands that we have here. Uh, oh, I don't know. Draw this. Uh, we have the here. Uh, my drawing skills are not not perfect on this uh, these symbols. And then you have the. Things. Okay, so let me uh, add a little bit of color to this. Uh, they would kind of. Okay, so we have four of these lands, and then for each of them we have like numbers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we you could think about the like last ones eleven, uh, and uh, and twelve. Uh, the main main thing so <clears throat> so this could correspond to the basically the uh, the spade uh, uh, the the ace the first one so the, uh, which we would have in this uh, this context uh, like for example this on this ace of the card and um, what we have now here so we have this all uh, basically appearing for all of these these examples uh, so I could copy this. Uh, Taste uh, what we have here. Uh, on all of these, um, and then what we have here is um, uh, we could then say that this is, uh, uh, and also I forgot this. Of course, the the last one the. The king. Uh, let me move this a little bit, and then you have the. So then you have uh, basically thirteen different ones, and then for all of them you have four different lands. So you end up to uh, uh, fifty-two cards. And uh, now, what you could think about when you do this shuffling of the cards. Um, you could think that all of them allow, allow link this initial position. So you could think about this would be like a state of the deck that they are all like in an order. So for example, in the, here in this picture, what I have the cards now here, they are like basically shuffled. So uh, these are now completely in some random order. But then initially when you open a new deck, they are in a like uh, order that is uh, given by basically uh, without uh, with this kind of order. Let's say in this order that I have it on the on, on this picture, then what you can do that when you shuffle, shuffle, uh, um, puts them them into uh, let's say random order. So if you think about that, this would be the initial order of the state. You what you could happen here, let's say I'm using like this uh, uh, this plan. So for example, this could exchange the order with this one uh, then this one could exchange the order with this one I don't know um, they could be like uh, various like this could be like a shuffle uh, 
uh, when you when you exchange the order, and that could be the new state of the deck, for example. It would be much complicated if you do like a riffle shuffle and other types of shuffles, but you basically end up to a really a random state of the deck by by a single shuffle. And this type of an operation, so if you like en enumerate this, like you could think about this as an en enumerator, so we uh, enumerate the cards into, um, I think I, I use uh, into this 0, 1, 2, up to 51. So we enumerate them into this um, subset of the integers, so this, uh, uh, or the natural number, uh, sorry, let's put the integers, uh, that basically the first is this one. So here this would be the 0, this would be 1, 2, 3, all the way to this is 12 and then we have 13, 14, 15 and so on and this would be 51, this enumeration that we would uh, we would like uh, uh, like uh, try to do uh, using the enumeration so on so on and 51 so that's the enumeration that we have for all these cards and so on and then you end up to here then if you do this like a shuffle, so you're changing the order of these things, you could think about you're basically permuting here. So uh, a shuffle is a permutation of 0, 1, 2, 51. So uh, that's the kind of uh, basic idea that when you're applying uh, a shuffle, so any permutation uh, to the deck, you get to another state of this this card. So, um, and so you could say that the set of all shuffles uh, is this, uh, which is called the symmetric group of fifty-two elements. So this is called uh, uh, symmetric group of 52 elements and this is basically just the set of sigma which are mappings from 0, 1 all to 51 to 0, 1, 51 which is a permutation. So all the permutations that you have here. So remember, what is a permutation? Just to remind you, the permutation is a bijection. So any bijection between from 0, 1 to 51 to 0, 1 to 51 is, a, is, is called a permutation. So recall that uh, a permutation uh, is just a bijection. So this permutation of this uh, 0, 1 to 51 is a bijection of uh, so, or bijection from 0, 1 to 51 to 0, 1 to 51. So that's the, uh, what we would call um, uh, bijection or the permutation of this, uh, this deck. Okay, so basically what you have here is now that the, the situation is the following. That uh, if you shuffle the deck, so if I take this deck of cards here, and I do I do like some kind of a shuffle. I don't know. I, I'm not really good at shuffling, but you could have I don't know this. Uh, you could cut it from the middle, for example, somewhere roughly in the middle. Uh, and then what you could do is that then you could like interlace them. So let's see. I interlace them. So you can see them being kind of interlaced over here. And then I okay. I do this. Okay, I kind of interlaced them and got them kind of shuffled into a new state. So now I got a new state of the car, so it, it went into a new state. And that operation I just did was basically a permutation. So it was a bijection of this uh, uh, 0 to 50, uh, these 52 elements, and I shuffled it into a new order. That was called a riffle shuffle I just did basically here. So I cut it somewhere in the middle and then I tried to like interlace them um, in, with, uh, with, this, with this action. And uh, so now you could think about that if I continue to do this, or if I do it again, like let's say you are in a, uh, playing a game with your friends or something, just trying to like, I don't know, play something simple and uh, uh, 
uh, and you can do it again, so you shuffle them again. Then what I just did here <coughs> is, is another reverse shuffle, but basically that I just uh, created um, a new state of the deck with two different permutations. Like, just so think about it. So the previous shuffle I did with the reverse shuffle, it's it's not the same as the one I did now because there was some like fluctuation with the because it might be that I chose the cutting point slightly not exactly at the middle, but also like when I interlace them, I'm I'm not very good at interlacings. I'm not not interlace them exactly at the same place. So this was another. I think this this was a most likely what I just did here was two different permutations. It's like absolutely no way I could just repeat the same interlacing exactly at the same place so that it would be the same permutation. So basically, uh, that's the like the feeling of random walks, how they appear here. When you are in a place and you're trying to like um, do some like uh, shuffling the cards and you're trying to make it uh, shuffle, it actually turns out that this is the randomness of this kind of idea, the human error that kind of happens, that you're not exactly able to interlace them properly, that's the one that creates the randomness within the deck uh, of the cards. And then there are like two basic things, so let me like uh, give you the, this is on the lecture notes, so you will be able to see, so the, there's the example uh, 1.1 on the lecture notes, which is this uh, so-called perfect uh, uh, Rifo shuffle. Uh, uh, that uh, if for some reason you would be so good that you would be able to exactly split it at the very middle and you would be able to interlace them exactly on the same way every time to the way that they go on top of each other, there's no errors or anything. Uh, then you can actually prove that if uh, uh, you can like formulate that kind of a permutation in the following formula. So if you take this uh, uh, mapping uh, sigma j and you just define it to be 2 times j when uh, j is between uh, 25. Sorry, uh, ooh, sorry to, to erase that. Uh, 25, and then you want to have it 2j minus 51 uh, when you are between uh, uh, these 51. So this is like now a mapping uh, from 0, 1. Well, actually, I could just uh, this is a permutation of 52 elements uh, that uh, that's bijectively maps to point. So what this is doing is that you're basically um, splitting your deck into two piles of exactly the same size, so the size will be 26 cards. And then what you're doing is that you're choosing every second of the cards and interlacing with the other ones. So when you have the two piles split up, then you take the top one of each of the one and interlace them exactly on top of each other to get the, the good deck, to get the second uh, card. And uh, that's why it's on this form that you can write it in this way that you have this kind of perfect reform shuffle. And uh, if, if you use this kind of modular arithmetic notation, you can actually see that uh, uh, by definition, this means that uh, sigma j is 2j uh, modulo uh, 51 uh, with, uh, with the convention uh, that you define sigma 51 is uh, sigma 51. The, the last card goes into the same, same place. Uh, uh, this is kind of just a definition using the modular arithmetic, if you are familiar that, with the first year notation that basically once you reach 20 um, uh, um, reach the next card you you, uh, uh, you you like more than 51 you go back into the into the zero that's why you subtract the 51 over here <clears throat> but now what happens with this perfect Rifo shuffle uh, curiously we have this funny operation that this is uh, uh, if you take Sigma uh, to the power 8, then this is actually the same as uh, this, which is the uh, this is the neutral element, the identity uh, identity permutation of so this is the identity permutation of sigma 51, so that's the one that basically just doesn't do anything. So this is like the identity shuffle that I don't shuffle at all. Uh, this was um, in the lecture notes, you can see the proof. Uh, this was done in theorem uh, 1.2. 
you can have a look at that. Uh, I'm not going to go through it in this uh, lecture now, but you can. Uh, it's quite uh, uh, well written on the kind of detailed there. But you can see that basically what this means that when you take eight of these perfect shuffles, so you're doing it eight times exactly, and you interlace them exactly perfectly eight times, you will end up to the same state of the deck as you started from. So that's kind of like um, if you're too good at shuffling, if you're exactly like perfect with shuffling, you won't be able to shuffle the deck properly. I mean, what happens when you do the interlacing looks like it's getting to a random state. It looks like it starts to look like really like a random state of the deck. But actually what happens is that it will just go back into the original state. So um, th there's a YouTube video I linked on the lecture notes. Uh, you could have a look at that. There's some guy actually is able to do that. So he's able to do it like eight times. And you can see that he shows the deck goes back to the original state. Uh, but the proof mathematically is given the theorem 1.2. And then um, the other example, so the, the kind of now you have this kind of extreme that you have this like very perfect shuffle, but what if you are like a normal human being that you're not able to do this insane uh, uh, performance like this guy uh, I show um, if you look at the video on YouTube, uh, then the only way to like really, really like uh, then do any uh, change is that you, you will actually end up to a situation that it will shuffle very, very into a random state. So what, what kind of the philosophically speaking, when you like want to convince to a friend of you, you're like playing a game with each other and you want to convince that it's shuffled enough, then as long as you're not perfect with shuffling, then there is a, there is like a result of, um, I think this was done by, um, uh, um, Diakonis and Shashani that, who prove that using like this like natural human like shuffling they like there's there's like a way of like um, basically modeling how humans typically shuffle in a normal situation when they do these like reform shuffles then they found out that it takes uh, basically seven shuffles to make your deck into a completely random state in the sense that once you are shuffling seven times this deck from the initial state where you have absolutely no uh, control of them, you just basically have them in a, in a very uh, structured order, like uh, I had in, uh, in the beginning. And then if you do this seven times, this kind of reform shuffle, you will end up to a notion which is, um, which is, uh, which, which is will, will be in, in this a very random, random state. So in the lecture notes, I will I had talked about the uh, reform shuffle model of Gilbert, Shannon, and Reed from 1955, where they did some measurements of the kind of typical uh, ways of doing this reshuffling. Um, it's on the lecture notes um, where uh, you basically what you do uh, do in this model uh, is to uh, what's called uh, what uh, random reform shuffles. Uh, so this is a, a look at the look at lecture notes. Uh, but basically, what you do here is that when you start from this this deck of cards that you have over here, uh, this is the deck of cards. You find uh, like a position in here somewhere, like maybe roughly in the middle that you cut. So this is the uh, uh, random cut point. So it's a bit like when I would do this, like if I would be trying to do the cut, I'm kind of doing the kind of the middle, but it's not exactly. It might be slightly slight variation, and the random cut point they basically choose according to something called binomial distribution. So something that is right, roughly concentrated in the center of the deck that you're roughly usually most humans try to cut it mainly in the center, but it's very uncommon that you could do something like this that you're basically cutting the deck at the, at this stage. So if you're like doing like a lot of random trials and like checking how humans usually cut it, then you could kind of go into this. Unless you're intentionally trying to uh, like not to do it like properly, uh, the cut. And once you have done, done the random cut point in the deck, you then um, take these two decks uh, over here. So you have these two decks, uh, maybe this one and then the, uh, the other one. And then you interlace them roughly on top of each other like randomly so there will be like some chunks that are not completely 
gone on top of some, some other ones. So it might be that they take on uh, under the next cards that uh, you do in this uh, random riffle. And here they kind of observe that this kind of like a uniform uh, distribution way of like uh, kind of roughly interlacing them will give you the kind of best uh, best kind of um, or the most uh, um, that match match the data uh, of uh, these random trials most accurately, and that's kind of the um, um, the the model uh, random uh, rifle uh, that they choose, <clears throat> and then what turns out that then then there's this uh, uh, result that I uh, maybe I should mention in the in the in the course. So then the um, what they what they manage to do is that uh, uh, diaconis shall uh, seven shuffles mixes the deck. Um, and uh, what happens actually, the, uh, the, uh, kind of the thing that uh, uh, also <coughs> what happens, not just that, but also that uh, uh, less than than seven shuffles, uh, the deck is uh, is still um, still very ordered. So if you don't do seven shuffles, if you do like six or five shuffles, then the deck with high probability will still be roughly uh, very close to the kind of um, similar state that you started from. So like really not too like um, uh, random state. But the problem is of course is that how do you formalize this kind of theorem? What do you, what do you mean by it like mixes the deck that it starts to look very random? And what does it mean that it still looks quite ordered? And for that purpose, we have all these like tools in the course. We will talk about information, entropy, mixing, and these notions to like really quantify this uh, this theory. And at the very end of the course, I will talk about the kind of uh, how the, in the car shuffles you kind of can quantify this uh, this mixing and uh, and ordering. So uh, that's kind of kind of the uh, main uh, part of the uh, topic about shuffling, and. Um, and I hope you got something out of these ideas. And there's much more in the in the lecture notes. I, I will talk about uh, something called Borel shuffles and overhand shuffles and other random transposition shuffles, which are other types of shuffling techniques other than the Riffle shuffle. And uh, you can have a look at like their models that they uh, they define in in these uh, in these examples.